All right. Uh, well, welcome everyone to Barn Bridge Project Call 006. Uh, we're going to start off the agenda today with Mr. Dragos himself. Dragos, please take it away. Oh, thank you very, very much, Troy. Uh, and hello, everyone. So uh, the first thing we're going to talk about is going to be the Barn Bridge app, specifically the yield farming. Uh, the first thing to mention was that, uh, well, I think all the community knows at this point is that Monday last week, uh, when the new epoch has started, we basically encountered uh, a bug that made the front end to crash. Uh, luckily, we saw that like pretty quickly, but we also found the root of the of the cause, which was like pretty good. Uh, that said, the bug was caused basically by the list of transactions received from the subgraph. Uh, we're basically saving that in the session storage and the session, the session storage got uh, filled up and uh, that was like Chrome just uh, giving uh, uh, crashing on each of the user's browser basically. Uh, I mean, it's a pretty good problem to have like too many transactions if you think about it. Uh, anyway, <laughs> we quickly addressed it uh, and we did it in a way that we basically stopped saving it uh, in, the session, in the session storage. And uh, that, in the end, uh, well, produce like a not so good user experience, which is basically what you get right now when you go to uh, to the app. Uh, and uh, you know, with our goal to keep a good user experience, we started uh, we started moving away from the graph, and uh, we started implementing our own backend component. Uh, and other than that, we also sort of like have done some. Uh, UI updates, specifically the the graph of the epochs has been a bit. So I can actually show like a sneak peek of this. Uh, we're soon going to roll a release of the Barnbridge app that's gonna include all this uh, nice stuff. So let me get some screen sharing here a second. Okay, can you guys see my screen? Yep. Okay, perfect. Uh, so this will be live either later in the day or tomorrow. Uh, but basically this is the app right here. You can see the, uh, the new graph that we play here with the epochs that shows the deposit and the withdrawals. And what I want to be visible is like how fast this is compared to how it was. And the same goes with the transaction list, right? So everything is snappy and fast. So, you know, we're all about like providing the best user experience here. Uh, I think that's all about the <clears throat> the eel farming component. Um, anyone wants to add anything or should we move forward? That looks good to me. Um... Okay. Uh, Bogdan, do you want to take it away with the Barnbridge DAO? Yep, I do and I will. <laughs> okay, Barnbridge DAO. So let's take it step by step updates from the dev team. Smart contracts now. Uh, 100% done. We're working on improving test coverage, doing some internal reviews. Um, as far as the design goes, a third of it has already been in, implemented in the front end. We're just connecting it to the testnet contracts. And shout out to Slava, who's been killing it with the, with the front end work on both yield farming and the DAO at the same time. Bogdan, uh, I think we can, yeah. uh, we can show the community uh, here a little bit how this is going to look like, right? I don't think that's going to be a problem. We all right. Yeah. All right. Let me let me share my screen here. A uh, small spoiler. Yeah. Uh, cool, cool, cool. You guys can see my screen, right? <laughs> Top secret. All right. Perfect. <laughs> uh, so I think we can show this part right here. I don't think it's going to be a problem. <laughs> uh, what we currently have here, it's uh, this is like how the uh, DAO overview page is going to look like. Uh, Dennis killed it with the UI once again. So shout out to Dennis. Uh, this is going to be the list of proposals. And uh, when you click within a proposal, you're going to get something like that. Uh, so I'm going to stop sharing right now. And uh, oops, stop sharing, stop sharing. That's the whole sneak peek that uh, everyone's going to get. Uh, sorry, Bogdan, back to you. Gracias. Yeah, that was just the. Ignore the top secret parts, the, the, the just three screens being spoiled. That was just uh, Dennis uh, uh, fucking with us. 
Uh, uh, shit, sorry for the, for the silly words. <laughs> can we can we edit this, Troy, in post production? It's all good. If, I, I'll, maybe I'll go and I'll bleep it. I'll bleep it. Yeah. yeah, I'll bleep it. <laughs> <laughs> just just leave it in there for the authenticity. Be Janet. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So smart contracts design uh, back end work in progress. We have a data pipeline working that will replace all of the stuff we're currently doing with the with the graph. We're just um, we're just slowly starting to feed data from it to the, to the front end. As I said, internal reviews are in in progress. Uh, all of our smart contract developers plus our advisors at at Par are currently looking at the at the smart contracts and making sure that everything everything is. Uh, Everything is in order and works as it should. We have two external audits already booked with contracts uh, signed. The first one starts uh, next week and the other one uh, probably later in the month or early 2021. And uh, that's pretty much it for the for the DAO. Uh, next up uh, on the timeline, Smart Yield Bonds, which we had uh, we had two, comp two competing models for the, for the Smart Yield Bonds. Milad and Rizvan know this uh, saga <laughs> well, and uh, essentially those models competed until one of them won out and borrowed the best features of the other one. So the smart contract development is moving along nicely with the with the winning model, and the implementation should probably be done in time for the for the for the winter holidays. The UI being worked on by Dennis, um, like. The, the largest emphasis on this is on the UX and having the smoothest possible experience with uh, every step of the way, um, you're getting some hand-holding and um, disclaimers at every step. So you know exactly what, uh, what, you're getting and what you're getting into. The backend specs also being worked on at the same time. This will include the debut of the in-app notification system. Uh, what else? Two audits booked for Smart Yield, both kicking off uh, early 2021. And uh, that pretty much covers it. Smart Alpha um, working V0 spec, if we could call it, almost completed with major, major help from uh, Adpar. And there's a, there's a kicker to that. There are gonna be two different Smart Alpha flavors getting worked on at the same time. We're probably gonna to have to edit the white paper and all of the docs out there to include both versions, uh, but you'll, you'll, you'll get a feel for what those are soon. We're planning for at least two separate audits for, for Smart Alpha as well. We'll announce more on that soon. Um, yeah, and the, like a, an overall focus and a very, huge emphasis we're putting on uh, on security. We have a pretty large in-house team doing the internal reviews. Adpar has been helping a lot with those external audits with the, um, all of the biggest companies in the space, to be honest. Um, double audits for, for all of the products. Uh, the reports are gonna be published and uh, you guys can take a look at them. The repos will be made public in, uh, in due time. Um, a bug bounty, uh, bug bounty, what is that? Bug bounty program that <laughs> Mark is going to talk more about later. And uh, some other interesting lines of defense that uh, we're going to use to keep funds safe, which are all going to be announced later. That's it. Signing off. Awesome. Awesome update there. Thank you, Bogdan. That was, uh, that was like a mic, a mic drop. Uh, yeah. Dev my mouth is dry. My mouth is dry. <laughs> Drinking <laughs> from my uh, wifey cup. I don't know if it's mirrored or not. Oh, there you go. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Awesome update. I hope the community really understands. I was like, you're getting a lot of information there. Um, a lot to digest, but we're all excited for that. Um, moving on, I think the next thing, there's been internal conversations around these ideas, and we've had talks with um, external teams about this idea of the standards inside of this ecosystem. Um, and I want to turn it over to Akeem, uh, who has really been spearheading a lot of these conversations. So um, please take a look. Sure. Um, everyone can hear me fine? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I mean, I guess on the last call, we talked a little bit about this around this idea of um, because of the nature of the products we're creating, we wanted to sort of build some clarity as to 
um, what the risks were around the products, but also just naming conventions, like you know, what are they called? What would a senior tranche look like? Just to create some level of uniformity, because as we put products out there, we want to make sure that it's easy for customers to be able to really understand what each product is and be able to identify them. Um, so we've been having those conversations, but we've also sort of expanded a little bit to also think a little more broadly around disclosures. So with most financial assets in the real world, like you tend to have to have these very long disclosures that kind of tell you what they are, what the risks are. Um, and we think that we need something similar, but maybe not as onerous in our space to create standards around how we disclose information around, um, particularly around the risks so that you know, sophisticated users can kind of see that and uh, you know, kind of understand what they are because they're used to um, financial disclosures in the real world. But we also want to make it accessible enough for new users who um, are in the DeFi space or in the crypto space to also like know what questions to ask. So basically, a, at least a base level of disclosures that lets you know, okay, what's important to ask, what's important that you should know about these um, assets and it gives you sort of a full sense of the risks you're, you're buying into. So we wanted to also kind of publish that and, and create a standard around that. And we've been talking with um, some of the partners who've been engaging around this idea. And so the hope is to be able to publish um, a list of disclosures, nomenclatures, like things that people will be able to easily find and reference as they kind of buy and sell our products. Um, and sort of like a, another thing I guess I, I can kind of share a little bit about um, is just around, we've kind of started thinking about some ideas around being able to you know, verify like proofs of liquidity um, in our assets. So because we're basically partnering with third parties and we're tranching you know, debt products that already exist from our partners, um, over time, you know, as we get more and more partners and more and more products, like you could see how it could get relatively complex, right? in terms of you know, who's originating debt um, and then what are we tranching and what are the various tranches. And so you know, we're beginning to think upfront now as to how we can make it easy for users and customers to easily verify that everything we're putting out there has or is meeting the standard of liquidity or collateral backing all these assets. And so we're in some conversations um, to explore those ideas. And, you know, we think we might not necessarily make it to the first round of our disclosures list, but it might depend on how quickly those conversations happen. But we're, we're definitely entertaining some ideas that would make it easy for um, anyone to verify on chain um, the level of liquidity that's backing all the assets we're putting out there. So it's easy to essentially measure, right? And ultimately, this kind of eventually fits into essentially like a credit rating system where you'd be able to sort of understand what the rating of an asset is and then verify that that rating is, 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 is what it is or it's constant. And if it's not, like you'll be able to see that maybe the collateral backing it is, has moved in a negative way and that's affected the rating of the product. But ultimately, I think in steady state, we want to make sure that it's easy for people to understand what these assets are and the risks and also easy for people to verify that these assets are behaving like they should be. Um, and then they can essentially, you know, price it um, accordingly. And I think in steady state, we want to make sure that that information is easily accessible and dynamic. Um, and I think that that's just to make that clear, I think that would be a pretty mark, market innovation um, in our space because in traditional finance, oftentimes it's hard to it's hard to verify the on an ongoing basis that a pool of assets is actually behaving like it's supposed to. So the feedback loops in traditional finance are a little slower, um, but in crypto and DeFi, we think we have the technology and the tools to be able to make that a lot more dynamic. And so it'll be easier for market participants to enter the markets, exit the markets with assurance that you know product ratings are what they should be and what they are. And you can track that dynamically over time. So that's the long-term goal, right? And I think we're trying to build, um, you know, all the, the standards, the rules, the, you know, the, the conventions with the hope, well, that our, all our partners will adopt those, but over the long-term that those become um, standards in the DeFi space that, you know, provide some level of self-regulation and self-disclosure that we think will be beneficial to the whole ecosystem.
Yeah. Um, personally, I find it really exciting what's going on with all that, um, especially uh, the outside conversations we've been having um, with different teams and the input that they've provided into that. So expect, I expect a lot of growth in that area in the next couple months. Um, following that up, let's uh, move over to the bounty section. And uh, Mark, if you want to give an update on how that's all going, um, the community and everything. Yeah, guys, so I'm just giving a small update from last week about the bounty program. So we have launched bounty programs and I can go ahead and just share my screen real quick. We have a few bounty programs up on GitHub and Gitcoin already. Um, so you can find them in our Barn Bridge bounty program repo. And also we have a separate one for project calls just because we're gonna continuously host project call notes and we already have chosen someone to do this week and um we have three bounties out right now we actually have one for spanish japanese and we actually have our meme competition going on for november and we actually have nine applications we're going to start uh narrowing down those this week and choose someone to translate our spanish but we have zero applications so if anyone you know knows Japanese or is willing to help us out with that, please reach out to us or apply for our Gitcoin bounty, and um, so we can get that rolling. We again, like we said last week, we really want to be community driven and offer as much as we can to the community to help with us. Um, so make a Gitcoin account if you don't have one. Make a GitHub account if you don't have one. You're going to need both to uh, have a Gitcoin. Um, if you have any questions about this and you're in our Discord, you can always reach out to me and I can try to help out get you started. But um, really, same as last week, we've gotten them going, we've got them started. So just keep an eye peeled for more bounties to come and uh, we'll be announcing them via Twitter, Discord, posting them so you guys will see them. But if, if you're on Gitcoin or GitHub, you'll be able to see them a little bit faster than everyone else if you're waiting to see it get posted to Twitter or Discord. And that's about it. That's all I got. Right on. Um, yeah, I'm excited to see what happens with this, uh, the call notes on this one. So that should be uh, an interesting experiment. Um, last but not least, uh, I think we'll hand it off to Tyler to give a operations marketing rundown. You're muted. I said, all right, it sounds like for the next call that I'm being asked to wear a uh, Santa costume. So we're going to need you to vote on that next week. Run I've lost Tyler. Yeah, I was watching did it, it slow down in the solidity coding, taking up all the Wi-Fi over there. <laughs> Is that oh, Christmas no. tree taking up all his uh, power? All right. Real Santa cannot uh, reveal hear? his identity. Wait, you can you hear me now? You're back. Wait, you you know? me now? I heard everything y'all were saying. You just couldn't hear me. But. <laughs> What I was going to say is, what do we have 3,000 people in the Discord? If we get a rough like 20% consensus of like upvotes on, we'll create a poll. I will buy a Santa costume, but it has to be next week so Amazon can get it here in time. So shout out to EJ for the idea. All right. Just a quick rundown on um, operations and marketing. Uh, there were some people asking us in Discord about like, official partnerships and so I think like there's a lot of like partnerships and I mean basically the partnership concept was so like abused uh in the ICO days that uh I like we've now moved into DeFi calling like actual partnerships uh what like acquisitions so um I know why the community is asking about partnerships uh and essentially as far as like what Akeen is doing, like, I don't know like how official you want to call like a 
partnership, but like we're working with like Abe, obviously who on this call, um, shout out launch their V2 of their protocol. Um, so I think that the whole world's going to be talking about that today in DeFi. We're also working with the opium team um, on just this general idea of like standards. Uh, we also talked to um, Chainlink yesterday uh, about standards in particular, like how you verify on-chain assets and like how oracles uh, would uh, be a player that could essentially work with that. And so like the community can kind of just think of this as as we have all of these like new on-chain tokenized representations of debt and then derivatives off of those debt uh, assets, like how they're all read on chain, it's going to become uh, a cluster for the ecosystem. And we're kind of trying to get out in front of it to uh, work with the community on some of those. We'll probably work, uh, like reach out to Maker and Compound um, once we start to solidify some things with some of the other players that I'm mentioning. Um, so I don't want to make it sound like we're like not, uh, working with the entire like ecosystem at this point. So like I put a long form, uh, just like response to everybody in general chat on discord, but for people that aren't keeping up with that, like on the Oracle side, we're kind of talking to everyone like Chainlink, uh, like Uma reached out at one point asking us to look into their feeds. I know that we're looking at like the iExec feeds. Um, obviously, we're going to use Chainlink everywhere that we can because it's like industry um, standard and um, there's a reason that Chainlink is uh, as successful as they are. Their, their team's pretty awesome. Um, but in terms of like actual, like you want to call something a partnership, it's like ink to paper partnerships. It's a lot more boring, uh, but I'll explain to the community just so everybody knows what's going on. Um, we do have some, uh, we are talking to two like relatively large exchanges. Both uh, are, we're under NDA for those. Like we can't like announce, I don't want people like front running it. Those conversations are progressing. I'm assuming they're gonna really progress once we start having live products. Um, we've solidified at least on our end, like some aspect of legal counsel um, as, uh, you know, you've got $200 million in TVL, meaning like we're, responsible for those assets and it's a big responsibility as well as the uh just general growth of Barnbridge uh from inception obviously we just need to you know figure out what we can and can't say and what we should and shouldn't be doing and make sure everything's done properly so things don't get pulled down uh Bogdan uh alluded to audits so I think we've like officially inked uh, Haichi and I, I believe Quant Stamp. I don't know if we signed with them. We're more working on like timing, but that's for the DAO. We'll probably just do like a hacking um, audit for Smart Yield, but more importantly is Open Zeppelin. So since that's going to be our like uh, big um, product that we launched originally, which fortunately will be followed up pretty quickly by uh, Smart Alpha. I think some of those original timelines of development have overlapped a little bit, but um, all of those audit firms, like, you know, we, those are like signed uh, deals that we were progressing forward. Um, and then also as Bogdan alluded to, we very well may be working with one of our partners uh, who helps scope out um, Smart Alpha to help push some of that forward. Um, that's unofficial, but like, I guess you could call that a real um, partnership. So just basically want to explain to the community that like we are talking to just about everyone in the ecosystem. I think it's a foregone conclusion that we will integrate with like Abe and um, Synthetics. Those teams have been nothing but helpful and honestly kicked Barnbridge off from the get-go. Uh, but in terms of like official partnerships, we are talking to just about everyone um, in the space in some capacity or another, but we just don't want to go around like name dropping unofficial uh, partnerships and the, the real actual ink to paper stuff is uh, very boring. But hopefully that just gives everybody an idea of like, I don't know, the, the boring behind the scenes stuff uh, that we're all working on. Um, in terms of marketing updates, uh, we've been like slowly rolling out uh, medium articles, more kind of housekeeping, like who the team is, like getting the team uh, opened up on 
um, GitHub so everybody can see uh, what they're doing. Mark has been doing a hell of a job on all of the bounty stuff. Um, and then we have some articles coming out uh, that basically the whole team's really been working on everybody from Akeen to Pablo and Vitaly uh, and Troy as well. There's like a Dow article coming out. It's actually kind of done, but we're uh, having internal conversations about one feature of the Dow that I think we need to hammer out before we share it with the community. Um, and then there will also be articles coming out on like some of the deeper specs around like smart yield and smart alpha. As we started building these products, they're not like the white paper is not 100% accurate anymore because like the devil is in the details on how you build these things. Um, I mean, in broad strokes, it's it's accurate and like the, fin the finite details uh, less so. So there's just a lot of stuff we've been working on. Like when Coinbase listed that they were looking at us for custody, they they linked to our bond token page, which was outdated. We've updated that. Um, we need to probably update the smart alpha and smart yield sections of the site. Uh, there's some like typos in the graphics we know. So there's just a whole bunch of like little things happening behind the scenes that are boring. But I think that come January and February, we're going to be shipping so fast that uh, people aren't going to be requesting uh, kind of unofficial partnerships because they'll will be at the point that we're moving to official partnerships. So hopefully that gives everybody an idea of kind of what we've been doing. I think we're kind of all busting ass and hustling. And I think you can expect to continue to see that uh, all by the, the Christmas blip will slow us down a little bit. The Christmas blip. That's an interesting way of putting it. Um, well, I'm a workaholic, so I personally like, you know, I don't like the downtime of Christmas, but all y'all all can enjoy it. Yeah, Tyler, for the last four years, would come to Christmas and then would open his computer while everyone's opening their presents. And I was like, oh, don't. And the, yeah, it's Christmas and Thanksgiving. He'd say, oh, my prank candles have a, a Black Friday sale. I have to do this. You know, always had something. He'd open his computer and do. It's well, all right, Tyler. We, we always <laughs> love you. Inside, inside family information there. Um, hey, I just want to add one more thing because I had people uh, talking about it in their applications. For the meme competition, guys, it's in our Discord, and you do not have a limit on how many memes you can submit. You can submit as many memes as you want. We love the memes. Your memes might get featured on one of Tyler's tweets or Barnbridge's tweets. You may not win, but keep trying next week. Um, November's uh, competition just ended. So we'll be selecting, um, we'll be selecting someone this week, and then we'll we'll put the bounty up for December. So holiday memes, whatever you guys want, post as many memes as you want. There's no limit. So keep the memes coming. Keep the memes coming. Yeah. We um, I want more Amish memes. I like. I love the. <laughs> I think those are. I'm almost liking those more than the the James Bond ones. <laughs> um, okay, so I think we can. Well, is there anything, because like the last thing is the round table. So is there anything that anybody wants to talk about that wasn't on the agenda? Um, usually this is where we have the question section from the community, but there was none this week. So um, if there's anyone on here who wants to say anything, go ahead now. Yeah, can you guys give us some questions maybe next next week? I don't think we've had one yet. This is project called 006. Maybe we could I oh, know we've had we've up. had multiple we've had multiple. Oh, have we? Yeah. I think oh, the question. FAQ bot on Discord destroyed the question. <laughs> <laughs> I think there'll probably be a lot more questions once the products start shipping, especially when like the DAO and everything. But like right sure. now it's just yeah, we were we were seeing some questions about the Telegram mayor drops and 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 that. So we Good officially point. like, yeah. So we are not doing any air drops on Telegram. We just have one Telegram group, and the only point of that group is just to forward everybody to Discord. So everything official is being uh, in Discord and Twitter, and do not like do not send your private keys. Do not send your 
uh, um, money anywhere. Just follow the official threats. Yeah. Yeah, like, honestly, just ignore anything about Barnbridge on Telegram. Like, we literally just have a group to push everybody to Discord. And we've been reporting these Telegram groups that are running this. I have no idea, like, what the scam is. It's some random bot. As soon as we pull it down, it just gets put back up. So, like, I don't know. Some yeah. people in the community are like, you guys are responsible. You need to, like, talk to Telegram. Like, well, I don't know anybody at Telegram. I'm not going to, like, I it's not just ignore it. Like it looks like a scam. It feels like a scam. It's you guys' fault. If you do something on there, it's not, we literally have nothing to do with that thing. So just do your own research there. We'll keep reporting it, but I mean, I'm not going to like officially reach out to telegram to stop it. Um, it seems like a whack-a-mole you drop one and they, another one pops up. So. Yeah. Um, Definitely. So, um, I'll, I'll add a couple couple lines. Um, so that we there were there were some conversations around governance that we've had over the last couple oh, couple of days on the on the platform, and so I just want to talk a little bit to that. I think we, you know, part of what we're really trying to do is ensure that we have, you know, a really fair governance process that balances, you know, expediency with um, you know, participation from the community. And, you know, as anyone who's been in the, you know, DeFi ecosystem, there's a lot of conversations and experiments around governance. And, and part of what we're trying to do is to make sure that we, we are kind of taking the best of what we've seen out there and incorporating it into what we're doing, but also ensuring that it aligns with, you know, our philosophy and our goals of making sure that this is a community owned project and you know the community ultimately we have you know the power to drive decisions. So you know we are we're we're being deliberate over the next couple of weeks to make sure that we're kind of dotting all the I's and crossing the T's. And I think a lot of the conversations that we've been having on the Discord have been very helpful um, because I think we've been just leveraging people's thoughts and I think just having these discussions openly are helpful. And so you know just to tell the community that you know we we are you know, governance for us is really you know at the top of the list. And we want to make sure we roll out um, a process that has incorporated like the best ideas out there, but also takes into consideration some of the conversations that have already started happening on our Discord. So, so hopefully when we launch it, it'll look it'll look a lot like a lot of the conversations we've been having, and you know, shouldn't be too much of a surprise to too many people. But um, the hope is that we launch a governance process that is as good as we can when we start, and as we hand it over to the community, you know. The community ultimately will drive, you know, how the, the process evolves over time. That, that's it. Uh, yeah, I, I definitely think the conversation that's been going on in the Discord has been really great. So, and hopefully that that will just expand as we start rolling out these modules. Um, it's been great. Okay, so if there is nothing else, um, I think we can probably call this. Okay, so we do have one more. We'll have one more project call before the end of the year, and then there'll probably be a lax. So if everyone's good, I think we're going to sign off. We'll call it for this call, and we'll see you all on Discord. All right. Thank bye you very much, all. Yes. <laughs> bye. Bye. <laughs>